All right, let's check out the comments this time. Thomas Nuke saying Wu Lei became the first Chinese player ever to score in La Liga. This is a very young Ecuador player, Pulasa. This is a chance! This is a chance! Let's go! Chance! Chance! Sixty-four minutes, three thousand seven hundred thirty-one days. Wu Lei scored the goal. Ha 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 ha! Yes, boys, Wu Lei has become the first ever Chinese player to score in La Liga. By the way, ni hao, everyone. It's your number one fat Asian. Comes to you again with another one of these China runs everything Korean mode. We're back at it again with episode four, actually the unlucky number. Because in Chinese, the word for four is actually the same as death. So you know how most Western cultures see 13 as like the bad luck number. For Asians, it's number four, which is say we got a big episode for you guys and we already have the tribute to Wule scoring the first ever goal of any Chinese player in La Liga and hopefully I mean legitimate real Chinese football news he could be the next big thing for China or the first big thing for China at least in football terms he's Chinese Pulisic and if you of the People's Republic are excited for the Chinese Pulisic go ahead smush your hard erect nipple into that like button right now subscribe if you are new I've seen a lot of clamoring to go ahead and bring it Wule into the side and all I have to say about that is maybe let and uh you know the unfortunate thing is if we do go ahead and bring in Wule, his potential is not all that high, at least not at that moment. Maybe after scoring that goal, FIFA will bump him up a little bit. But speaking on the subject, we had a vote on this in the last episode. We went ahead and voted on this man right here, Jiang Shenlong. If you can't remember, this is a real-life Chinese player. He's 18 years of age, and he's six foot four. But his potential is only like 64 or something, and I had you guys go ahead and vote on whether I could go ahead and raise his potential to something usable. I said 80, but <laughs> a couple of you guys went a little bit overboard. Just like this Moroccan guy said, petition to make the six foot four guy be given 90 potential. And that's a little bit high. You know what I'm saying? And 154 of you guys actually agreed with him. I don't think I'm gonna put him that high, but I'll inject him with a little bit of Chinese steroids and we'll get him to 80 potentially usable and then from that point on he's gonna have to earn it being he's either gonna have to get you know man of the season man of the match awards or you know mvp of the episodes in order to boost his potential and also in the votes i asked you guys if we should use one of our scout future stars bring him into the club and then nationalize him as chinese and overwhelmingly you guys said yes and here we go the scout has finally returned so let's go ahead and take a look at the youth academy and see what we got please be anything but a keeper we're gonna know who he is because he's the only guy in here who isn't Chinese or Nigerian. There we go. We got a center back. Okay. Leonardo Castro. 64 overall, 17 years of age, 6 foot 2, and it has the potential of either 71 to 91. So not bad. Plus he's 17. So we can go ahead and promote him to the senior team already. And then we can go ahead and take a look at him on the squad report and see what it says there. Is he an exciting prospect? Wow. I hope that's a glitch. Right now it says his status is He's only been at the club since 2019. Usually by the time they hit 60, if you look in their status, it'll say what potential that they have. So has the potential to be special means that he's going to be in the 90 range. That means that his potential isn't even going to be 80. What is up with Scout Future Stars? What was the point? Oh my God. It's, it's, it's the episode. It's episode four. Yo, the curse of the four is real. Like, if we look at our Chinese prospect, Quan Yi, at right back, you can see that he's an exciting prospect, which means he'll get a potential somewhere between 85 to 87. And speaking of which, we finally have our first crop of youngsters, and we got some absolute monsters, man. We got Hu Kong over here, who has the potential to be special. We also have a left back, Zhu Lang Tang, and he also has the potential to be special. You'll also notice that both of these guys are white guys. So I have no fear you guys also went ahead and voted on that. We are going to go ahead and be changing them over to look more Asian. As well as the first 11 people who subscribe to me over on Twitch, I'll be whispering you either today or while I'm on stream. Or you'll be whispering you guys and I'm going to be having you guys go ahead and name these people. What I think we're going to do is you're not going to fully name them. I'm going to keep their last name or give them a certain last name that is a Chinese surname. But you guys get to go ahead and name him the first name. So instead of Hugh Kong, you could name him... King Kong. We could have a King Kong 
and a King Dong. But we did get lucky on a couple other prospects. As you can see, Yao Feng over here, who seems really tall. He has the potential to be special. He's 17 years of age. Plays center mid. And then for my Nigerian brothers, we got this guy, Kevin Babayaro. He has showing grip potential, which means he'll be somewhere in the range of 80 to 85-ish. And then we have Chao Chen, who's 17 years of age, who's also an exciting prospect. And when I last left off, we were in the January window. And honestly, I hadn't had enough time with the likes of Alfonso Davies and Dennis the Menace and GBA, so I thought I mean, there's no point in going ahead and bringing in any new boys. So with the remainder of my money, there was only one guy that I could possibly go after, and it was the guy from the intro. We brought him in, boys! The best Chinese player in the world, Wu Lei. As I like to call him, Wu Lei the Dule. You guys who don't know, Dule is how you say fuck you, Cantonese. But now let's get into what happened on the stream. Last time on Dragon Ball Z. For you guys that don't know, I stream a portion of the season live on Twitch so you guys get to see what happens. And plus I get to go ahead and interact with you guys and have you guys give me some suggestions. And there were some great ones, man. First one was from Nabzo and he suggested that for every dollar that is donated on stream, we add 1 million onto our transfer budget. And I think that's just a brilliant idea. And this also counts for subscribers. So if you subscribe, that's $5, that's 5 million into the budget. Also, Oh, I mean, a weird thing happened, and I might have brought this upon myself in the last episode. We brought in a now fan favorite, the leader and captain of our team, Wayne Gang. But whether it was through fanfare or for the meme, Every single match that I played on stream, I had you guys go ahead and vote on the man of the match. And the man of the match, we would give a small upgrade. And every single match that I played, no matter what, you guys always voted for Wang Gang. <laughs> like, we could have been upgrading Dennis or Alfonso Davies or, you know, a Bang Wang even who super needs it at the keeper position. But no! You guys just always voted for Wang Gang. He was 29 years old, but you guys voted for him so much that we injected him with good old Chinese stem cells and HGH, and we reversed his age down to 27. Put up in the eye thing is you think this is a little bit unfair, but I mean, let's be honest here. This is happening in real sports right now, and I don't want to burst anyone's bubble. China is really good at juicing. And this is the cherry on top. When it came to the MVP of the stream, naturally, of course, you guys voted for Wang Gang, and what did you vote to give him? The most useless trait in the game, Leader of Men! <laughs> the only thing Leader of Men does is in the cutscene when someone gets fouled, Wang Gang will be the one to go up to the ref and talk to him. That's it! <laughs> That's the only thing this stupid trait does. But the cult of Wang Gang kept on making him the focus, so I'm a man of the people. I can only do what the people want. It got so ridiculous on the stream that the people who are in the camp of Wang Gang have now started referring to themselves as the Wang Gangers. <laughs> where is this career mode going? Got to the point where on the second day of the stream, I made it so that we couldn't vote for Wang Gang anymore. But the chat nearly revolted, so I have made a compromise, and you guys can go ahead and get involved in this as well. Vote up in the I thingies right now. And that compromise is the next great right back that we get, high potential right back, we are also going to name Wang Gang. He will be the son of Wang Gang, aka Wang Gang Jun. And it just so happens that we have already scouted a potential to be special right back that is this man right here. Ignore the name, ignore that he has a white face. Because in the next episode, when you see this guy, I'm gonna go ahead and copy all the physical attributes of Wang Gang and put him on Wang Gang Jun. I will tell you this much, you will not experience this in any other career mode on YouTube. But enough of you guys trolling me, let's get into the highlights. Alright boys, since our promotion is all but guaranteed because at the China Mind I thought I'd go ahead and go on a little bit of a FA Cup run and an FA Cup run we went on get aside Bristol China's coming to town We were gonna showcase that we could compete and hopefully go up against some of the best talent that England has to offer Maybe a couple of prem teams speaking of prem teams former Hull, We're picking up the action at 1-1 look at the bounce so fortuitous for the cheesy computer But then three minutes later in game time Paulinho goes ahead and buries it into the back of the net to uh, to tie everything up at 2-2. What a leap and what a goal over the outstretched arms of the keeper. And then 88th minute, could we possibly find that magical moment? Played over to Hulk, big shot over. Dennis the Menace crosses the back post and he's there. And China are going through 89th minute miracle for number 20. I can't read his Chinese name. I am a horrible Chinaman, but dance, my brothers. 
dance away for this night of glory is ours. As we move on to West Brown Chalbion, who already have a one goal lead, but look at the strength of Taliska. Child's play! Child's play! As we get into the back post, and Paulinho goes ahead and buries that one. Now, tied at 1 1, 35th minute. Look at the intricate 1 2 play. Oh! Oh, I get my nips all a tingly right there. Taliska, Augusto, and Dennis push us past West Brom. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And then we actually do go up against a Premier League caliber side. Bournemouth next on the mat. Can we go? Oh, delicious. Delicious, delicious cross. Taliska just feathering it over to Polino, telling everyone to get down. And look at that. Punctures it into the back of the net. Too much ferocity. Too much force for even the likes of Eddie Howe and Bournemouth. 27, do better. But then we should do better because a terrible pass, an instant giveaway, and when you make mistakes like that on ultimate difficulty, the computer will show no mercy. You know who did show mercy? Our keeper, Bang Bang, what are you doing? Stick out your hand. It's right there. Stick out your hand, young lad. <laughs> Tied at 1-1, we knew. We had to get past it. We had to get past it. We did. Hulk pounces on a little bit of a fortuitous bounce. Ah, oh, bullshit goal for bullshit goal. I love it. It's tasty. And Hulk, the first to react. And of course, Hulk, smash into the back of the net. And that would be enough to get us past a cagey match up against Bournemouth. And here we are at historic Wembley Stadium, China Men. Striding out onto the pitch brings me to tears. You know what also brings me to tears? Uh, four deflections. Four deflections. Just punch me in the nuts, bro. Ultimate difficulty CPU going full cheese, but I can't blame the cheese on this. Look at that. Defense not good enough. Instantly, it's 2-0. And before I can even blink, 3-0. And yeah. Yeah, that, that fourth goal. Yeah, that. I don't think we're going to advance. As you can see, it's already 5-0. No? Arsenal gave us a little bit of pity. We had a goal there. Davies attacking the byline. Brings it back. This is actually some, some nice football here. Hulk bags himself a brace, but... That was... That was not good. <laughs> Our defensive line absolutely collapsed in that match. And Arsenal go ahead and Thanos snap our FA Cup run out of existence. I don't feel so good. Go time with it. Yes, we had a little bit of a Cinderella run in the FA Cup, but it all, it all came crashing back to reality. <laughs> Defensively, we were starting a 63 rated keeper. You know, our back line is full of 60 rated and low 70 rated. But we are now at the end of the season. You can see that we finished quite comfortably in the NFL League 2, 119 points. And as you see at the end of the year stats, Hulk finished atop with 34 goals in 46 games played. And as you can see, there's gonna be a little bit of discrepancy here. Dennis the Menace is only down in 12th place with 13 goals. You might remember in the last episode, he had 16. The reason for that is, uh, there was an issue with the save where I couldn't get the right footage So I had to go back to an older save and then uh, thus when I moved on and resimmed Dennis the Menace did not do quite as well from the last episode But still 13 goals for his initial season not all too bad Taliska contributed 14 as well Alexander Pato scored 20 as for assists Anderson Taliska topped everyone with 11 Hulk came in second place with 10 and then you got Pato and Paulinho down there with seven apiece And for clean sheets it was Zhang Chen the China number one that one goes ahead and gets it with 21 clean sheets. And since it is the end of the season, we have to go ahead and vote on our man of the season. And that person is going to get a huge stat boost. And to that, I'm thinking either we can give them one or two traits, or if they're an older player like Hulk, we can go ahead and boost them full of HGH, move them back in age a little bit, massively boost the potential of a player. The possibilities are endless and something that I'll probably discuss and make a decision on on stream. But I think the three players that we're going to nominate for man of the season after all the games played. Now, not really taking into account their, their stats in the sim portion because simming is a little bit fickle. Hulk was fantastic in pretty much all the games that were played. Taliska was really good. And last but not least, because f*** it, 
Wang Gang. Oh, why did I do this to myself? But since it is the end of the season, we also have to go ahead and vote on which of the youngsters that we are going to nationalize into Chinese. So, of the three youngsters that we brought in, which was GBA, Dennis the Menace, and Alfonso Davies, we can only go ahead and turn one into Chinese. And I think for the other two, I'm going to put them out on loan because I genuinely enjoyed using all three of them. So, go ahead, vote up in the I thingies. I think it's going to be a landslide for Alfonso Davies. So, personally, my vote would be for GBA. He was great. And then, as of the next episode, we will be in a fresh summer window and bringing in three new boys. So, leave in the comments down below who should we be going after. And there was a huge suggestion that I didn't even know about. And the Twitch pad alerted me to this fact, and I don't know how I didn't see it, but Tahit Chong, who is the youngster for Manchester United, he just recently made his senior debut in the Premier League, as well as he came on in the historic 3-1 win up against PSG. How you like me now, boys? He's in fact half Chinese. I mean, his last name is Chong, so I probably should have guessed. But his father is in fact Chinese, and his mother is from Carousel. And upon looking it up, he is not capped for a senior side, so he is actually eligible in real life, as well as in this career mode to play for China. Under actual FIFA rules, this is like legit. So I think for sure we're gonna go ahead and put him on the shortlist and bring him in and he is not gonna count against the Chinese rule at all. In fact, we can immediately nationalize him to Chinese. Also, in the youth scouting, we did a little bit of research on stream and we found out besides Africa, the number one place that China has invested in is actually Brazil. As you can see in this infographic, China has invested over $13 billion into Brazil, which means we got our hands in there. The same thing that applies to Nigeria should apply to Brazil. And if you really think about it, Brazil can only take so many players to the World Cup. There's a lot of footballing talent in Brazil. A lot of young players who come from poor backgrounds that might be enticed by a little bit of Chinese money. That's why I think in the next round of scouting, we're going to go ahead and set up a scout in Brazil. Also, I know you're looking at the screen right now. It's fucked up. We we still have Robert E. Lee in Nigeria and this time he's looking for physically physically strong. <laughs> we got to get Robert E. Lee the fuck out of Africa before this gets too serious. Let's move him over to Brazil. And since this is the end of the season, let's do a quick little squad report on players that really matter. First up is Bei Wang, our 13 year old goalkeeper. He grew by plus seven. Well done to him. Zhang Shenlong, the six foot four, 18 year old, grew by plus seven. He's all the way up to a 59. GBA grew by plus two. He's up to an 81 and he has got absolutely fantastic physical stat. Hulk went down by negative one which is unfortunate, but he did win one of the man of the matches, so we injected him with a bit of HEH to put him at 27 to keep him stable at 80. Renato Augusto went down by negative one. Paulino went down by one. Alfonso Davies grew by plus three up to 75. Dennis the Menace grew by plus two up to 77. Taliska grew by two up to 85. He's the highest rated player on the team. Wu Lei unfortunately stayed at a 77. I think this is pretty much his uh, his top potential. But up in the eye thing, should we increase Wu Lei's potential to 80 as well? And that is it for all the pertinent players. Holy s**t! I was just advancing? But check this boy out! Jackie Chan comes in with the highest rated potential player that we have seen yet in the Chinese Academy. Yo! 85 to 94! Oh my god! Value almost at a million already? He's 16 years of age. We might just have found the Chinese Messi. Bro, side him up. And with that, that's pretty much going to conclude season one of the China Ruins Everything Room. I know we are moving super duper fast, but I don't think a lot of people want to see me in League 2 and League 1 for that long anyway. It's not the point of the series. We're moving rapidly and we are ever evolving and I am overwhelmed by how well this series is doing on YouTube. So thank you guys so much. Thank you to all of my Twitch subscribers. We are quickly approaching 100 subscribers on Twitch, which is absolutely mad. Honestly, I was praying by the end of this year that I would hope to have 200 subs on Twitch. And you guys have just blown this completely out of the water. So thank you guys. Thank you guys for all the support. For all you guys who don't know, I I'm making a big push right now. Um, to go ahead and move out of my parents' place. And the long story short on that is basically they don't believe in this dream. They don't believe in, in me as a YouTuber and as an entertainer in this new digital space. And to have almost 100 of you guys go ahead and, and donate to me really, really helps me out more than you guys know. And it just, it gives me belief, man. And it, it feels awesome to know that some people out there do actually believe in me. So thank you guys. So as we sign off for this season, we got a lot of stuff that we got to go ahead and vote for, but I'm super excited to go ahead 
ahead and launch into this next season. We're going to be incorporating these Chinese youngsters a lot more in the second season and not relying so much on the Paulinos and the Hulks of the world. And we're going to be getting into their backstories as well as if you're watching this right now near the premiere, hop over on the Twitchy Poos right now and we'll be playing a lot of it live. And you too can join the Wang Gangers. And if you aren't caught up yet, go ahead and click on the last episode of the China Career Mode. Or if you want to check out my latest FIFA 19 experiment, go ahead and click down here, Dixie Poos. But yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Be my myself. You guys are having a wonderful day. Remember to stay yourself. Stay humble. And until next time, boys. Joy game.